Oh, it's the waiver wire show right in the middle of the season where you've got to know who to pick up. Do you pick up great options out there, which we have for you, or do you pick up Jason Moore, my namesake? It's probably not a good idea, but you could do it, and you could find out more about him and other great players on today's episode. Check it out. Hey, Foot Clan, we'll talk about that terrible game last night. Well, it was all right. It was all right. But first, we want to thank Zorro for sponsoring the show. Zorro is where you can find everything you need for a business of any size and almost any industry. They have tools, equipment, supplies for everything you need. Whether you need stuff for industries like electrical, plumbing, manufacturing, or more, Zorro's got it from brands you know and trust. And Zorro.com offers amazing customer service from real people based in the U.S., Visit Zorro, Z-O-R-O dot com slash footballers in all lower cases to sign up for Z-Mail and get 15% off your first order. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. This is the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. I'm your host with the most, and no, I'm not a friendly ghost because I'm in, I'm in here, I'm a human. Because you haven't <laughs> died yet. <laughs> that you know of, Jason. Ooh. It's all a simulation. Ooh. It is October. I'm your host, Mike the Fantasy Hitman Right, joined by my, my good, no, great, no. Best fantasy oh, friend in the yes. business, Jason Moore. How are you doing today, Jason? I'm doing what is fantastic. This you're doing? Well, look, you built me up. You built me up, so I gotta, I gotta have a best friend, a best friend, best in, friend pose, best best friend pose. <laughs> so I did it. It was amazing. Andy is away again. He's gone this week on vacation, which means Dad is gone. We are going to play. We're gonna do whatever we want. Sorry, Foot Clan. <laughs> Jay Grizz will hold us in control yeah, but a little bit. Keep it down, Jay. As much as a cardboard bear extraordinaire can do. Now, uh, real quick, need to do a Twitter check on the Jay Grizz. Uh, oh, yeah. you can. So, I'll, I'll jump into that. You want to follow us on Twitter? It is at the FF Ballers. You can follow all of our personal handles as well. I am at FF Hitman, at Jason FFL, at Andy Holloway and at J Grizz FFL one Z one Z. If you if he you want to you his stream of the week all the time, that is absolutely true. Every week, a great streaming option, and uh, he currently has twenty six and a half thousand Twitter followers. <laughs> he is a cardboard bear. So, if you'd like to follow the cardboard bear, you can do so. He's a good follow. He is. He is <laughs> no joke. He's a great follow. He's a good follow. Let's get into Monday night, Jason. What are what are the takeaways from what happened last night? We're going to talk about the fantasy takeaways because we're a fantasy show. But first, <laughs> but first, what the what the crap was that? I mean, look, I get it. Penalties get called wrong. I'm usually one of the guys that's always like, the game is 60 minutes. The last play, the last call, like you had your chances. But that game was straight up stolen from the Lions. I totally understand that, like, okay, that first penalty, let's say that's not called. The Packers have to punt. The You know, they don't get seven points. So now they're down quite a bit. The Lions have the ball. I'm not saying that the Packers couldn't have come back and won. But what I know for sure is that the Lions did not have a chance to win. Right. Because what they needed to do to win was stop the Packers, which they did twice. And then, but but not really, because the ref said no, he didn't. That yes. was just it was it was very frustrating. And so I want to kick it. Look, uh, Brooks is out today. We have Owl Borland from oh all the way from the Spitballers podcast. He's uh, l holding it down. You're always here, anyways. You're just not on a mic usually. Owl's behind there, but Owl, you are a huge Packers diehard fan. What what do you think that you guys deserve that win? No, no, <laughs> we uh, we had a big of all nights. We had a big Packer party last night with a bunch of friends getting together to watch the game. And 
the mood in that room when the game was over was not one of a winning uh, <laughs> No game. jubilation. I, no. I had someone uh, responding to my tweet of upsetness last night, and they were at the Packers game. And they were like, you know, look, the bad calls both ways. They were totally fine with the Packers' victory. Then I wake up this morning, and apparently hours later, they went home and watched like at home and saw the replays, and they're like, oh, my bad. <laughs> we did not deserve to win that game. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the implications of fantasy. Matthew Stafford came out just nuclear. Guns blazing. I believe he had 100 passing yards in his first three attempts three completions or something like that. Well, I mean, opened it up with a huge pass to Galladay. He looked fantastic, and then it kind of fell apart. You didn't get the fantasy day you were hoping for if you played him. Only finishing with 265 passing yards. Carry on Johnson. We were expecting really, really big things from him, and it, it didn't come to full fruition. 13 carries, 34 yards, a rushing touchdown. There was plenty of other chances for him to score mo more rushing touchdowns. Yes, but he either didn't get in or they went away from him. It was I was pulling my hair out at one point when they were on the goal line and seeing the the left side of the field completely open. Just please pitch it. Please right. just pitch it to Carry on Johnson. He guaranteed will have, touchdown. He will have to beat one player. He will have to juke one guy. And they still said, no, we're going to do 1984 man football right up the middle. Yeah, and then when they didn't, then they just threw a bunch of fades. When when the Lions got off to a, a hot start, had the lead, you assume this is going to be a great carry on Johnson yes. matchup. It's very disappointing that he finished the game. Like, he wasn't efficient on his 13 carries, but, but sadder was the fact that he only got 13 carries. And it's not like, I mean, look, J.D. McKissick got three there, there wasn't like right. he was the guy. They just didn't run the ball that much. And, and granted, I mean, some of these penalties we're talking about that are really frustrating. They, they kept the Lions off the field. Like the Lions sure. should have had two more drives in that game, and that's where Carry On would have been trying to kill the clock. And he didn't get those opportunities, but he did get the touchdown. So you're not disappointed with him. The Hawk Strap came through with another dropped touchdown. Oh, he is. <laughs> I mean, I don't hold on to the ball, man. I, I think we're on to three. Nicknames, because I can't oh, no. think of him outside of T.J. Droppinson. Like it's fair. I mean, it's right there. It's right there, and he keeps doing it. This yeah. guy should have like five touchdowns this year. This one was a, it was a rookie move where he, I mean he strong handed that ball, but then he did not pull his arms in, so he ended up falling right on his elbow. Which, I mean, if you're a vet, you know you can't do that because it makes you drop the ball. Uh, on the and then. I mean, that, Kenny Galladay had a game, 5 for 121. Marvin Jones, you were super disappointed. If you played him because, I mean, yeah. you, he had so many opportunities. He he was thrown. The, the air yards were great for Marvin Jones. That's one of those players maybe look for next week. If you're in a DFS lineup, that they were going to him. He was just, you know, inches away here or there from a big game, but he ended up with a terrible one, 2 for 17. On the other side of the ball, Aaron Rodgers, almost 300 yards, two touchdowns. One and a half. <laughs> I still don't. I, those tap pass. I'm, I'm formally <laughs> against them being. What? Ah, oh, but they're fun. No, I mean I love it when it's a guy that I want. <laughs> like, it's like I had Aaron Rodgers ranked low, and oh, so that okay. like I, I will see. admit this is now bias. it comes out. This is bias. I want my rankings to be good, and when when he's basically struggling and and not playing well because he in in fairness to him he didn't have any of his weapons, uh and and he did not and then towards the end of the game. Penalties aside, he looked very Aaron Rodgersy. He did on on the last uh, after after the drives were kept alive by the refs. Then he balled out. Yes, I mean he he lost Geronimo Allison. He lost MVS for a stretch of time, and oh, then a new champion appeared. He got, he got him. Oh, Al oh, <laughs> oh, Sammy Watkins, you you're gone. <laughs> it's the new Lazard King. <laughs> Alan Lazard, <laughs> oh, the Lazard King came out last night, and we'll talk about him in the waiver wire section. Uh, you know, that was he ended up with four for sixty-five and a touchdown, and finished the game with five targets. He really didn't come in. Then towards the end is when he really did his damage. But 
It sounds like Aaron Rodgers likes him, and when Aaron Rodgers likes somebody, he throws him the ball. It's all that matters. We'll, we'll talk about him a little bit more in depth in the waiver wire section. Aaron Jones got the coach uh, spanking. Well, he he deserved it. He had the pretty egregious fumble that and then a wide open dropped touchdown. It would have been a difficult catch, but I don't think that was that difficult. To well, I mean, you you're running full speed and you I look, like, I'm not saying you could do it. That's what I mean. But for for a for a, a pro professional NFL, football player should make that catch. Yes. And he dropped it. Pretty pretty tough, but the, and then Jamal Williams came in 14 for 104 on the ground. Looked good. He looked like the better running back last night. That's not good for the timeshare, but we will move into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Debo Samuel from the San Francisco 49ers. He suffered a... Ah, my groin. Ah, ah, my groin. Uh, he suffered a groin injury. He is day-to-day. Uh, it, I will do the shout out now then for Brooks because he's not here to do it, but Dante Pettis, he was brought down multiple times at the two where he could have scored and then had an end zone target where one foot was just out of bounds. Curtis, or, uh, sorry, Dante Pettis was very close to a solid fantasy game. His snaps continued to rise. He has established that he is the number one wide receiver in that offense. I don't know if that means fantasy goodness is coming. But he's the number one, and if Debo Samuel is going to miss some time, that helps that. Certainly. Adam Schefter is reporting that Cam Newton has been cleared to return to practice following the Panthers' Week 7 bye. Now, I don't know if you have heard from Riverboat Ron, but he has not confirmed this. He's keeping it close to the vest. He's saying oh, he's, he hasn't confirmed it, but Adam Schefter, that's right. super high-ranking NFL reporter. That's right. Even though the news is out that Cam can get back to practice, he's like, I'm not, I, I have nothing to say on this matter. Wasn't I chastised for calling him a, a big fat liar? Yes. Yes, you were. <laughs> now, in fairness. And we're back to this. Well, he's not lying, but you, the, the, where your heart was at. Yeah. I think was right. Like he, <laughs> Thank this, you. This whole thing with coaches where it's like, I I, I get some kind of weird, wacky edge by holding information close to the vest. It's crazy, man. It's like you're not carrying nuclear codes. <laughs> you know, this isn't something where, like, if, if people know this, now they'll easily stop him. It's just so weird to me. The Jets activated – Tight end Chris Herndon from the suspension list. I have to imagine activating him is a good sign that he will be playing this week. There was concern that the hamstring injury would keep him out for a few games, but he was not counting against the active roster. So if he is now, I have to imagine he plays. Uh, it's being reported that Patriots tight end Matt Lacoste is expected to miss at least a few weeks. And so the Patriots have re-signed old man strength tight end Ben Watson. Ooh. Any interest there? Uh, no no interest to necessarily pick up and play. I would definitely if you're in if you, look there's there's about four or five teams in every league right now that are in tight end hell, you know, yes. and they and they have nobody. You got to keep your eye on them because you have Matt Lacoste who's been running a ton of routes. Like the the non-target non-fantasy numbers behind the scenes are really good for him. But he's Matt Lacoste. Ben Watson has been a successful fantasy option. So keep your eye on him, but I'm you know, I think you have to wait for the breakout because he's probably not going to break out. So I don't want to clog a sure. roster spot with him. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Get it. I mean, you, you don't want to miss any of the late breaking fantasy news right as it happens. So check out the Sleeper app. Jason, let's get into the waiver wire. Put me in, coach. <laughs> Put me in, coach. Oh, I. I guess that's this is redundant since I was put in this week. I was already, you know, I'm in the game. I'm catching balls. You are. You're on the waiver wire today. <laughs> Am I really? Fantastic. <laughs> I will say this, and I'm just letting everybody in the world know: there is not a dynasty league I am in where I don't where I don't have a waiver wire claim on yourself, on Jason Moore. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. I'm a little disappointed you didn't already have yourself. That that shows little faith. I will. I will tell you. I was super disappointed when I realized I didn't have myself. Like, I should have already. As soon as that player was in the system, I'm in a dynasty league. Like, this is 30 people benches. I could drop, like, four guys at any time because they're never going to. 
you know, I, I don't know who I've, I think I've got like a, a injured old running backs in my IR spot. Like I'm picking up Jason Moore. You know, I used to do this with like, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd throw Tim Tebow. Even when he was oh, not you're playing, getting the, getting the Tebow bump, exactly. You get that like morale boost. <laughs> you pick get, pick get me up. Grit is what you get. All right, let's talk about real waiver wire ads for your leagues that are going to help you win. It's not a great waiver wire week once again. Yeah, it's it's more of a stash type of week. But remember, returning from the bye, you have the Bears. <laughs> which congratulations. Yeah, we're glad to have them back. The Bills, when they are in for it. As the kids would say, they are due. And we will be highlighting some of their players. The Colts and the Raiders are also back on by this week. Be prepared. The Browns, the Bucks, Panthers, and the Steelers, you will be without them. And that is a lot of fantasy players. At the wide receiver position, let's start with the guys where they are probably owned, but you should at least check to see if they're available. Robbie Anderson, welcome back to Fantasy Relevance. Mr. Anderson, 5 for 125 and the score. The schedule is not conducive to fantasy performance for the next couple of weeks, but then it opens up. Uh, it Very, very wide open for the Jets, as we highlighted yesterday, so check for Robbie. John Brown, he was on a bye week. He is not widely available, but because of the bye week, he could be available in your league. And if you can get Jay Brown for free right now, Miami, Philadelphia, Washington, it is oh so delightful. And Mo Sanu. Jason, are you picking up Mo Sanu? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Mo Sanu should be owned. He's uh, the, you know, the Falcons have to throw the ball nonstop. They can't run. And because their offensive line is porous and they can't run, it's, it's not as easy to go to the deep options you know I think we're a little bit disappointed with where Julio's at right now sure got off to a hot start definitely disappointed with Calvin Ridley after that week one and some of that is because Hooper and Mosa knew these guys that are in the middle of the field quicker easier throws they're getting more targets than we like so yeah I mean he, he's probably owned but definitely worth rostering the main waiver wire pickups I would say my number one pickup who is available in more than 50 percent of leagues is Jamison Crowder, he has been an absolute target machine that hasn't led to a ton of fantasy goodness, but Spleen Darnold has been out for some time. Jamison Crowder this past week, nine weeks, six for 98. The same thing with Robbie Anderson where it could be tough sledding, but at least in these matchups where I'm nervous to play Robbie, I would still play Jamison Crowder in a PPR situation. Games with Spleen Darnold, week one, 17 targets. This past week, nine targets. Like Darnold is going to him, and he's he's hit ninety nine yards and ninety eight yards in the two games where he's played with Sam Darnold. Yes. So he, is he your number one wide receiver pickup, or it, is there another one? For if you? I'm in a full PPR, he's definitely my number one. If I'm standard, I, I don't think you're going to get much over the next two weeks. And half, I'm still into it. Yes, half half I like him. Uh, the the it, the thing is, uh, in addition to everything you said, Colecio Simile, their guard starting guard just went to IR so even though they got a big win this last week that's bad for, I mean I was just talking about right like Matt Ryan when you don't have time to throw the right. ball deep to Robbie Anderson because the guy's in your face you're going to be getting the ball out of your hands quicker that's going to be Jamison Crowder with a noon wall out everything should go his way and if Chris Herndon doesn't get back to the field you're good I, I mean I feel like I would water bet 10 targets for Crowder for Crowder now New England I mean I guess We'll see how long they have the ball to throw, throw right. those targets. But, yeah, going forward, I, I really like uh, Jamison Crowder. Here's here's another name I want to bring up. Uh, he, we've we've talked about him the last three weeks running. He's, I, I know where you're going, and he's my number two wide receiver pickup. This is where I say if, you know, if it's a standard, he would be my number one. Auden Tate. Yeah. Look, he's he's been great. I, I went back and watched. Have you watched all of the I have. So the targets that went to Auden Tate this last week, most of them were terrible. I mean, just no chance at catching. There was a lot of them, though. 12 targets for Auden Tate. Yes, 12 targets for Auden Tate, most of them uncatchable. But when you're able to catch the ball he did and in spectacular fashion, you don't have A.J. Green. I mean, there's rumors that maybe he's back this week, but... I feel like we would know a little bit more. He'd be back at practice. He'd be doing things. They're talking about him being back this week? Like last week, 
I heard they're aiming for a week seven start. But that's oh, what you right. say. Yeah, the, here's the thing. We're going to hear they're aiming for a week eight start really soon. So Auden Tate, without John Ross, Tyler Boyd's been disappointing. And, and he's been balling out. He's also a mammoth of a man. 6'5", yes. 228. He's, he's a big dude. Uh, he, you know, what, do you, what else do you want? you got a team that has to throw the ball. You've got a, a guy getting a ton of targets since he's been in the game. He's the, the 1A or 1B right now in that offense. He's a giant beast of a man. I mean, the only thing you want more is just a better quarterback throwing on the ball. Yeah, he certainly checks the boxes, and this is the time of year where you you just got to grit and bear it with these types of players. They're producing. He's getting targets. He's He now has two games of double-digit targets. Like you said, Jay, they're going to have to throw it a lot. Now, you're going to play this week. you got to pick a guy up to play this week. you got guys on by. Both of these players we brought up, Auden Tate and James Crowder, they've got crappy matchups. Right. Jacksonville but, and New England. But in a half or a full point PPR, I'd still play him. So is there anyone if you needed a spot start? So like Keyshawn Johnson, five targets, but yeah. they're throwing a lot, a, a juicy matchup on the road against the New York Giants. Would you start him over either of those guys this week? I just, I, I want to because I buy into the matchup. Everyone that plays the Giants just produces fantasy gold. But Keyshawn Johnson, week one, 46 yards. Since then, he has – since week three, he has surpassed 20 yards one time. So the answer is no. Yeah, I just – I can't get behind it yet. But he's still a guy on the waiver wire list. Yes. He, he should be in your queue of, of wide receivers if you need someone because when you look at the snap percentages, the game script, he is a guy that is is due even though he hasn't been you know, putting up the numbers yet. I'll tell you who I would pick up and play – we're talking, to, especially in a PPR. Uh, can I can I guess that you've got a disease for him? You you know it. Mm -hmm. You when you go down with the Beasles, Cole Beasley, wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills. Joe, look, John Brown might not be on your waiver wire. If you are in a PPR, though, I am one hundred percent picking up Cole Beasley. Miami, Philadelphia, Washington. Cole Beasley is a he's going to be a target machine, and the matchups are. Definitely juicy for him. So if you need a spot start, Cole Beasley is interesting. McCole Hardman is still available. He's, you know, he whatever. You could throw him in any single week and that, have him go off, but he has not done so in quite a while. Only four for 45 this past week. Deontay Johnson is sort of interesting, but he is on by. How do you feel about any of the, the Miami wide receivers I guess the, the matchup feel, against Buffalo shuts it down. I, well, let's say it wasn't a matchup against Buffalo. Let's say it was a matchup against the Giants or the okay. Cardinals. Or, All right. I would say I feel bad. I feel bad. Uh, I don't want them. I don't want to start them. Um, you can't make me do it. Devontae Parker has scored in back-to-back -back weeks, Jason. Still can't make me do it. He had, I believe, 28 yards. Dante Pettis, you could probably pick him up as well. He's an interesting stash at this point to see if things get better. And then, oh, 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 damn oh, oh, oh the Lazard King, Alan Lazard of the Green Bay Packers had the breakout last night. Here's the thing. The hit on Geronimo Allison was, it was rough. It was man. a brutal hit where usually when those hits are that strong, you're going to miss a week before coming back in the concussion protocol. When you go out. And he was on Monday, so he has f fewer time to recover. Yeah, so, uh, you know, he, I expect he is gone from all the words coming out of Devontae Adams' mouth. I expect he's not there. So, Alan Lazard's going to be on the field. And what we were alluding to earlier was Aaron Rodgers loves Lazard. He he says, this is the Lazard king. His words. Yes. His, his, his words, not he mine. Where he was like, yeah. the Lazard king is here to reign upon us all. <laughs> and um, what does Lazard reign <laughs> look oh, like oh, it's it's yellow <laughs> oh, oh no oh no oh no stop oh, no. raining <laughs> but but my that's my, not rain yeah the uh the the real stuff that aaron Rodgers was talking about was that, that he was happy to get him on the field right because he's been doing this non-stop in practice i mean you know you want a guy that aaron Rodgers trusts he threw a deep bomb 
uh, touchdown attempt to him, back-to-back plays, failed on the first one, went right back to him. And like you said, he you know he didn't get in the game until late, and he still ended up with a good line. He's 6'5", 227, so he's a big target. If these guys, put it this way, they don't have guys right now that are getting separation. So you throw to the big monsters. That's why Jimmy right. Graham and Mercedes, Mercedes Lewis was the number two uh, you know, in, in yards last night, he's throwing to the big guys that, okay, the separation is there, go up, just be, be bigger than the tiny cornerback. Oakland, Kansas City are the next two matchups for Green Bay. Perfect. We don't know if Lazard will be able to hold on to the throne for multiple weeks, but he is interesting. I mean, he might be like the Lazard Prince. Or like a Duke. Right. I like that. <laughs> But uh, uh, And in deeper leagues, I'm going to bring it up again. I talked about it yesterday, but Nikhil Harry, if if you're in a deeper league, I think he is worth stashing for his inevitable return. He was a number one pick by the New England Patriots. He's a good wide receiver, and I think that it's, it's possible that he can give you some second-half fantasy gold. Before we move into the running backs, actually, no, Jason, we I forgot. I apologize. Jason M. Moore. Oh, thank you. For the Los Angeles Chargers, you should really pick him up. I mean, he would he he's the number one he's like <laughs> claim, right? He's the Tim Tebow effect. If you want the Jason Moore bump to your fantasy roster. And you do. Yeah, I mean, uh, look. <laughs> people are saying, "Well, how, what percentage of fab do I spend on all these wide receivers that you're talking about?" I think if you want to go after Jamison Crowder, I would I would spend up a little bit more. I pay to, I'd pay a decent amount for Crowder. To me, I'm usually like for wide receivers, a lot is like fifteen percent. I don't go crazy on the wide receivers. Uh, you know, on on a, a tight end breakout or a running back plug and play start from injury, I'll pay fifty, right. sixty if I have you'll pay to. A, you'll pay a kittle. But you know, if I lose out on Jamison Crowder, you know, I would I would rather have you know, a Lazard or an Auden Tate for, uh, you know, a dollar or two than spend 15 on Javis Crowder anyways. Um, but I would say 100% of your fab budget for go Jason, to Jason Moore. Of course. Now, before we get to the running backs, I want to thank today's sponsor, Manscaped. Support for the fantasy footballers. Today is coming from Manscaped. They're number one in men's below the belt grooming. They offer precision engineered tools for grooming those sensitive areas ladies and gentlemen this is not 1972 you got to get it tight you got to get it right you got to make sure that things are clean and per they're just they're prepared for whatever is for whatever is happening and you yeah. and you want to be you want to be groomed and you got to use manscapes to get there they have redesigned the electric trimmer the lawnmower 2.0 has proprietary skin safe technology this trimmer won't nick or snag it's a smooth ride. I've used a trimmer on my face that cut me. Right, and you <laughs> and that wasn't okay. That wasn't okay. I see what you're getting at, but I'm telling you the lawnmower 2.0, it's it's the right trim, it's the right ride for exactly what you need downstairs. And you don't you look, you don't want to use the face trimmer. Oh, oh in gross. a secondary location. That's terrible. Keep it clean. <laughs> look, and they got other awesome things. Uh, like anti-chafing de deodorant and moisturizer. You put deodorant on your armpits. Look, fellas, other places stink too, and you don't want that. Get 20% off plus free shipping and a free travel bag with the code FOOTBALLERS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code FOOTBALLERS. And Foot Clan, we want to remind you about the Foot Clan. Jointhefoot.com. You can support the Remind show. you about you? Let me introduce Allow myself, myself to introduce myself. So here's the deal. Um, you can support the show. You get access to a ton of extra tools, rankings, flex rankings. And the big announce is that while while Papa's away, we stole our we stole our programmer and we said, hey, yeah. we got this cool idea, the Stream Finder. Oh, yes. And we're going to make excited. it this week. We're going to make it available to you guys. It's going to be the coolest thing ever. Basically, if, you're, if you've used the consistency charts uh, on our website where you could see you know, how good a team has been or how good a player has been, how consistent, we're going to flip the script and show you the positions again. So like uh, team, team by team, how are they trending against certain positions 
so that you can very easily find a good waiver wire pickup, a good streaming matchup, play the matchups. It, it, I'm really excited for it. I am too. Look, we all use fantasy points against, but as you know, in certain cases, I mean, that's just that's the average of what has happened. That's not necessarily predictive or indicative of what's really happening right now. Like, look at the Denver Broncos that's running game. Exactly what I was going to bring up. You look at them on the season, you go, oh, they're a good matchup. They've been locking it down the last couple of weeks. They figured it out. This will show you the trends. I'm super excited. So if you want access to that and so much more, go to jointhefoot.com. The running backs that you are probably picking up this week, he is likely owned because he's 66% owned, but Malcolm Brown should be on your rosters with Todd Gurley having a, quote, chance to play I, this I, weekend. I said it earlier. I mean, there's a chance Malcolm Brown off of his poor game is my is my start of the week. At Atlanta, the matchup is great. They are not going to be able to shut down the running game the way that the 49ers were. So, yeah, if he's out there, you have to pick him up. Um, I don't believe you have to pick up Adrian Peterson. He's a big name that, that did a lot. But, I mean, San Francisco, Minnesota, Buffalo, and then the bye week nope. for a bad team that's going to be down in those matchups. I'm not excited there. What is the status of Darius Geis? Was he... I believe he was designated to return um, I, from IR. I thought he was Owl gone. Borland, if you're able to, see if you can find anything on that. Yeah, I, I don't remember him being designated to return. One of us is going to be right, so we'll just focus on that when Owl Borland. All right, main pickups of the week, Latavius Murray, 8 for 44, but also 3 for 35 through the air. This is kind of just you're, you're picking him up to, to monitor Alvin Kamara's injury status, although... Uh, Matthew Betts are, had an injury recap article available on the fantasyfootballers.com. If it's just a grade one MCL injury for Kamara, he should be okay. And they're playing Chicago, not the best situation. But then they get Arizona, very interesting. Jamal Williams cannot be ignored, Jason. Uh, 14 yeah. for 104 on the ground. Oakland, Kansas City. We talked about Green Bay's upcoming schedule. Here's the deal. Everyone every week is going to start Aaron Jones. Is that correct? I mean, you've got Aaron Jones. Yeah. You start him. He's going to be in a 50-50 split with Jamal Williams the rest of the way. Now, on a per-touch basis, I'd much rather have Aaron Jones in my lineup than Jamal Williams. But if he's getting the same opportunities for the same team that, uh, of a guy that's automatically started, and, and Jamal Williams is 18% owned, I was actually really upset. So... um in our league of record, I, I talked about how I was picking up a deep... I dropped the player late. I think I talked about this. Um, I dropped the player late because my opponent didn't have a defense. They were trying to pick up the Lions to play last night. And so I had pre-dropped someone so that I could pick up the Lions, keep them away from me. Right. But unfortunately, or fortunately, I smoked my opponent. So I didn't, I didn't need to play keep away. And I went to pick up Jamal Williams. I was like, oh man, I'm going to pick him up. I've got a roster spot. He hasn't played yet. And then he was owned. Mm. What was he doing owned in our league? Because the same way that Aaron Jones had running back one upside mm. if Jamal Williams misses time. Mm. Uh, and so facto, Jason. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Well, Jamal Williams has huge upside if Aaron Jones misses time. I would rather pick – other than Malcolm Brown, who's probably not available, I, I think Jamal Williams is my number one pickup this week because if you need a guy right now yes he gets to play Oakland Benny Snell I talked about him yesterday he is on by so that he's not going to help you right now but he was 17 for 75 and James Conner keeps missing time during games with injuries he gets a bye week to heal up but sure. Jalen Samuels is gone uh he he's probably still gonna miss a couple more weeks he yeah. had surgery so uh, I would imagine Benny Snell still gets work Alexander Madison Jason, is, is he moving into a category for you that he is not just a handcuff? No, I don't want to start Alexander Madison personally. Do you? Not, I mean, I, not really, but four, week, But here's, here's the situation. Week one, 49 rushing yards. Week three, 58 rushing yards and a touchdown. Week five, 52 rushing yards. Last week against Philadelphia, 63 rushing yards. Yeah. So, I mean, it's I, – I guess that – if if you are really up against it and just scraping the waiver wire of saying I need a running back to play, I think Madison he could he could get you fifty yards. Yeah, and I don't think I want that. I don't want here. Look, 
Here's his uh, rank, his finish on a weekly basis. 48, 60, and then week three, 21. All right. All right. All right. 66, oh. 45, and 43. He's basically below the top 40 running backs on a weekly basis. I'm not plugging him in unless there's an injury to Dalvin Cook. And if I have to plug him in, all I'm hoping for is an in-game injury to Dalvin Cook. I, I don't think Madison is more than a handcuff right now. All right. 30% of snaps was the Vikings' leading rusher this past week. You pick him up and you play him <laughs> in any matchup against me, Mike. You have my All right. blessing. Uh, Daryl Henderson, the other Rams running back, he should be picked up. Yes. Atlanta and then the Cincinnati Bengals. And of the two, Henderson looked far superior as an athlete, as a running back. That may not matter. Well, I it, think it's, it's, it's Sean McVay is the the only opinion that matters for that offense, and I think that Malcolm Brown will continue to be the the leader. But we could see more of a timeshare. I think moving forward. I think moving forward, you're talking about uh, a sixty forty at most. The most that Malcolm Brown gets is sixty forty. And if we're talking about Malcolm Brown as a must pick up, you know, he's probably owned Daryl Henderson. A.K.A. Darnell Anderson. Stop. I love that nickname. Darnell it's Anderson the, is is uh, maybe the best nickname we've ever come up with. Um, I, he, he has to be picked up. And and you know if I had to play one of those guys, Alexander Madison, Madison or Daryl Henderson, I'm playing Daryl Henderson because I think that he is going to get enough work. And his schedule, I mean, Atlanta and Cincinnati the next two weeks. If Todd Gurley is out. Obviously, I'm not playing him if Todd Gurley is is back and healthy, but uh, he looked more explosive. the The Rams paid a lot for him, and if you hear Sean McVay talk about him, even before this last week, he said there's going to come a time where he's the guy. Maybe it's as soon as this week. Right. Are you interested in Mark Walton? Oh, hey, <laughs> it's me, Mark Wahlberg. How you doing? Let's say hi to your mother for me. But is, uh, is he going to say no. hi to your fantasy roster? No, you, he's not. Because Are you going to pick him up and stash him? No, hold on. Let me just do some research here. Yep, he's still on the Dolphins. What kind of keyboard was that? It was a mechanical keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using a typewriter. <laughs> so you use a typewriter and then scan it. That's right. And so then, then and then you could do like I a believe PDF it is search. the same technology that the Dolphins are using for their scouting department. No, I'm not picking Possibly. up the running back three for the worst team in the league. Oh, maybe he's the running back two. Don't I'm not picking up the RB one. I mean, I would if if Drake was out there. I'd yeah, you would pick him. All right, players that should be owned: Chase Edmonds, yes, high upside. Ito Smith, not as high upside as Chase Edmonds, but look, I th I think he should be on your roster. His, he should not. He will get a lot of opportunity if Devonta Freeman misses time. Yeah, and he will, uh, here's the thing. If Devonta Freeman misses time and Edo Smith becomes the 100% every down back, he will suck. You want to know why? Because he's not good at football. He is too slow. He's like he's like a kid <laughs> trying to play in a, on, a, on a high school league. He's just out of his league. He should not be an NFL backup. That's my, I mean, that's my opinion. I could be Right, but why are you such a mean person? That's well, that's the only issue I have with what I'm saying because the content <laughs> is correct, but it feel, I feel mean. You and could, I'm sorry. You could deliver the, the the content in a different way. All right, hold on. Let's let me try. Okay, okay. <laughs> is that the uh, typewriter that's way back machine? Yes. Okay. Um, so Edo Smith, uh, look his upcoming schedule. He's got the Rams. He's got the Seahawks, and he's on a bye week. Um, I, you know, there's a, there's a world where he could become the starter. I don't think you're going to be pleased with him because he sucks. Oh, I, that was I way better though. That was way better. I gave you a chance to fix it. You, I you, did. And you still put him in a body bag at the tight end position. Whew, all right. So maybe it's Chris Herndon time. Now, real quick, real quick. Oh, sorry. Just, uh, I want, I want to order some of these guys. Cause we talked about a lot of legitimate pickups. Okay. Uh, Malcolm Brown, Latavius Murray, uh, Daryl Henderson, Chase Edmonds. Let's take Malcolm Brown out. He's out. He's number one. But those other guys are kind of close to each other. Or and I and I forgot Jamal Williams. So let's talk Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams will be my number one pickup. Latavius Murray. 
He's, uh, I guess, if if we're talking you need a player right now, I guess he would be number two, but he's at Chicago. Uh, not a not a big fan of that. And then it's just your stashing guys. Yeah, I, mean, I, I would, would I would so I'll elevate Daryl Henderson. I'll pick up Henderson over Latavius Murray. So I would go uh, Jamal Williams, then Daryl Henderson, um, then I think I would go Chase Edmonds, then Latavius Murray. Okay. And at the top of this, you're talking probably thirty percent of your Fab budget, and and these these are guys worthy of burning a waiver priority for. Yes, at the tight end position. Guys who are probably owned, the corpse of Jimmy Graham, TJ Hawkinson, Jason Witten, Gerald Everett, they might be on your waiver wire. But who cares? I, I don't want Jimmy Graham. I don't want TJ Droppinson. I, I, you okay, know. well, but <laughs> I, I, I would take I lay Jason out Witten. those names. I would, oh, I would all right. Yes. So, like, Jason Witten is shockingly a top 12 tight end. And you I, shouldn't be that shocked. I, we, we should have seen this coming. I know. He's always th- he's the tight end 12, which yes. isn't that great. But on a on an individual matchup, I think that going up against the Eagles, which has a beatable secondary, you know, we, we, we just saw the recipe from the Vikings, right? They can't run the ball as much, but they can throw the ball. And Amari Cooper is probably going to miss this game. That's a great so point. So if Cooper is out, Jason Witten becomes a, a, a really good option. Somehow he's 60% owned. Which is probably the grossest thing I've seen this whole season. All right, let's get into to tight ends that you actually can get off of the waiver wire. Chris Herndon, he would be my number one pickup of this bunch because the the bunch is tough. <laughs> it is tough this week. Luke Wilson, Seattle Seahawks. No, thank you. Will Disley looks like he's done for the season. Luke Wilson knows the system. He's had big plays before with Russell Wilson. No. I can't uh, talk you into it. You can't talk me into it. You can't make me do it. Um, I would rather play Darren Fells, who, uh, you know, we, we talked about last week. You know, he, he was a, a gross option. You're kind of chasing points, but he's scored in, you know, multiple weeks. And then last week, uh, he seven was, targets. He was, yeah, he was involved. He was pretty good he's played at least 62 percent of snaps in every game he's the tight end 13 so I'd rather go Darren Fells over some of those weaker options and just hope for a touchdown um what about Dawson Knox Buffalo Bills tight end he's I mean five targets before the bye week we're all in love with the Bills we'll talk about them in our in our streaming uh matchups as well their schedule is great but the reality is like if if you go okay I want Cole Beasley um, I want, uh, you know, Dawson Knox. Um, not, I want John Brown. Not all of the options are going to pop. You're going to be disappointed with some of them because I don't think the the Bills are going to be putting up 35, 40 points on offense. Um, but he's he's definitely a player in this category that I would be willing to pick up. All right. Is there any more waiver positions, Jason? Just guys that we perhaps miss that you really need to highlight before we get into our streamers uh the only the only name that comes to mind uh, we highlighted him a little bit but i would just really emphasize jason moore <laughs> he's probably the number one pickup of the season you're not helping anyone no, uh, listen foot clan you are smart enough to know the sarcasm if anybody is hurting their roster picking up jason moore that's on you that is not that is not on me i can't wait to see your mentions oh there uh, look that uh, send them, send me the screenshots, but don't hurt your team. Only drop a garbage player, and if there's no good waiver wire pickups, because our job here is to get hashtag Foot Clan titles. We do a good job at that. But if you can do that with Jason Moore, heck yeah, even, even better. Full stream ahead. Full stream ahead. We highlight our favorite streaming quarterbacks for the week. Let's just get it out of the way. Jay Grizz, who do you got? Oh, no. Of course, Mitch Trubisky versus the Saints. Gross. You are I would, such a homer. I would not do that. I would not do that. Jay Grizz is t- he's a good Twitter follower. Bad takes. Terrible an analyst. We are so dumb. That's true. That's really. <laughs> We're talking to a cardboard bear. Yeah. All right. Actual quarterback streamers of the week. I am going with. Daniel Jones. No, I will not use the nickname because we we need to do better for this man. You're saying, oh, better than Danny Dimes? Yes. It's terrible. Thank you. You're finally on board with it's just it's like Matty Ice. 
It's like, oh, ooh, yeah, what a cool. He's Danny Dimes. That's dumb. Matty Ice is those are so terrible nicknames. Unbecoming of any person in this entire world. Yeah, it is the worst. Daniel so Jones and I. <laughs> and who? And is it and I? It, what what is the actual lyric? Mr. Mike? Jones and me. Oh, and me. <laughs> that's that's perfect. I'm staying Wait, on brand. All right, I'm I'm here with with Mr. Jones. <laughs> Whatever. All right, Daniel Jones against Arizona. Arizona bleeds red, and they bleed fantasy points to the quarterback position. They have allowed five quarterback one weeks on the season. Daniel Jones, pick him up, play him. It's going to be perfectly fine this week, especially if Evan Ingram can get back. Oh, please, Evan Ingram. Please, please, oh. Evan Ingram be back. Goodness. For this matchup, Daniel Jones will have a solid week. Who do you got, Jay? Uh, look, I've got a guy I've been we've been telling to pick up for weeks to stash him for the upcoming schedule. I'm putting in the stall the stallion himself. Oh, Yay! excellent, Josh Stallion, Josh Allen. He has only been a top twelve quarterback once, and we are going into week seven. Granted, he is uh, off a bye week, but we know what he can do when he's in a plus matchup. We saw it at the end of last year once he got back from his injury. He was, I believe, the quarterback two behind only Pat Mahomes. He might have been the quarterback one in certain scoring formats because he runs the ball so much. He's got passing weapons, I think, coming out of the bye, and this is a matchup against Miami. Yes. I mean, he's going to do whatever he wants to do because that's what Miami lets you do. They're trusting the process, man. And he's a great pickup because it's Philadelphia after that, which is excellent. <laughs> Thank you. And then you got Washington after that. Oh, oh man. Excellent. Oh. So, yeah. Josh Stallion, he's my streamer this week and, and forever. For the next five. several weeks. The he's next available five weeks. in about half the leagues out there. All right. Let's find a defense. Defense versus offense. Presented by Head and Shoulders and Walmart. All right, let's get this out of the way. All right, Jay Grizz thinks you can stream Chicago. You can't pick up Chicago. They're already owned. Jay Grizz, we're looking for a streaming candidate off of waivers, but I, I agree with – I would play the Bears. I agree with the cardboard, cardboard bear extraordinaire. I would play the Bears if I have them. I will save mine because it's kind of oh, gross. Oh, yours is super Look, gross. This for Streaming defenses is becoming more and more difficult. I think people are – are catching on to the fact that maybe it's it's okay to hold on to two defenses sometimes. I think the Foot Clan, is, is, when you say people are catching on, I think the Foot Clan is really – people are needing a streaming option less from our show because they're doing it two weeks in advance like we've been telling people to yeah. do, and that's great. In fact, the number one option this week is a, is a team you should have picked up last week because they were balling out, you weren't sure if they were legit or not, but you knew they had an upcoming great schedule, and that's the San Francisco 49ers. So the San Francisco 49ers, they're my main play. They're at Washington. Their defense is super legit. They look great, but assuming they're unavailable now this week, but they check for them because they are still available in about 40% of leagues, so they're, they're definitely the main one. I'm going to go with Houston. The Texans... Defense is not the defense that they used to be, um, but they still have been putting up fantasy points. They are against the Indianapolis Colts, which is a, a ho hum middle of the road offense. They're you know they're not like a perfect play that you could just go and you know they're not the Dolphins, but they're not the Chiefs either. So I, I think Houston is this is a really rough week for the matchups because the teams that are usually good enough to stream off the waivers. Most of them don't have good matchups. Yeah, like like the Giants versus Arizona. The Giants are available, but I don't I don't want to stream them against Arizona. The the, the the Cardinals offense has been clicking, it's getting better. And the Cardinals are available because they've been terrible. They get Patrick Peterson back, so that's helpful, but now they're on the road and I wouldn't then, I, I, would wouldn't, I wouldn't stream them either. He, you know, Okay, you can. Um, I'm All bracing right. myself for what you're going to say. It's the Kansas City Chiefs. They're not a good defense. You're streaming their offense? I'm streaming their defense. They are at Denver. Their Denver gives up sacks. 
Kansas City is a favorite. It's a few of the things I'm looking for when I'm looking for a streaming defense. It's it's tough. If you could have if you could pick up San Francisco, I would rather do that. But I'm assuming there there's a lot of you out there that can't do that. The Titans are another team that is probably owned, but they're 50-50. So half your leagues, the Titans are out there. They're playing against the Chargers. But I like the Chargers are a better offense than Denver. But I would much rather play the Titans defense over the Kansas City Chiefs defense. And they I don't know if they're gonna have Chris Jones or not. But if you're right sure. on this one, whoo the glory. <laughs> I mean, it, I'll I'll give you major major kudos. All right, head and shoulders, offense for your hair and defense for flake free scalp. Check it out on Walmart.com or at your local Walmart. Got to thank today's studio sponsor today, yesterday, and tomorrow's studio sponsor, mm, actually. Every day. Pristine Auction, the best sports memorabilia site of all time. A DeAndre Hopkins signed jersey just went for $82. And I'm sure it went to a member of the Foot Clan. Very possible. Because they're out there scooping up these deals. I've seen the walls of jerseys that look amazing. It's probably my office you're referring to. Yes. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's very red in there. There are a lot of signed Cardinals jerseys for pristine auction. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining the podcast. We will see you tomorrow. Probably hit some mailbag. Do some real cool stuff. Super cool. It's going to be the best. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Support for the Fantasy Footballers comes from Manscaped, number one in men's below the belt grooming. They offer precision engineered tools for your sensitive parts. The Lawnmower 2.0 has proprietary skin safe technology, won't nick, won't snag. And you can get 20% off plus free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS at manscaped.com. Always use the right tools for the job.